Welcome aboard, Captain. Prepare yourself for interstellar travel. There's a fortune to be made out there amongst the stars, and it's up to us to make sure that we're the ones that earn it. Cosmonautica is a simulation and management game where you take on the role of an ambitious space captain whose goal is to accumulate money as they travel the galaxy, trading goods, and completing missions. At the start of the game, you'll be given a small tugboat-like ship and a few thousand credits to get you going. You'll be able to customize your ship, hire a few crew members, and then basically set out into the solar system to travel wherever you like. Each of the galaxy's solar systems has a number of planets, and each planet has a space station that you can visit. Now, each station you visit has the same basic options available to you. You can buy and sell goods with the local merchant, depending upon prices and availability. You can hire crew members from the local recruitment center, each of them with a different selection of skills and traits. And finally, you can visit the lounge, where you have the option of accepting missions and bounties. You can choose between trading and transport objectives, smuggling jobs, and occasionally requests to hunt down pirates. Eventually, when you collect enough cash, you'll be able to upgrade your ship. Each different type of ship has advantages and disadvantages, and you'll be able to customize it with equipment and weapons as you see fit. A larger ship needs more crew, though, as you'll need people to repair, clean, and pilot your vessel. This also means that you'll need extra facilities, as your crew members will need places to sleep, eat, or relax as they travel the galaxy. Eventually, with enough time and money, your crew members will gain promotions and become better at their jobs, and you'll be able to research new equipment and star maps so that you can travel to new locations. Now, as I go deeper into explanation, I should like to say that Cosmonautica, to its credit, has a very reliable trading system. Trading in Cosmonautica is largely a hassle-free process, and every solar system you visit has a very simple setup for explaining which goods are desired and which goods are produced. On top of that, there are also supply chains which can reap greater profit if you can find the right materials, and contraband items which can be worth much more money but have more risk associated with their transport. And here's the thing, if all you want is an interstellar trading simulator, then Cosmonautica might possibly satisfy you. Because if you're looking for anything else, you're going to be disappointed. Cosmonautica is a game where honestly, there's no reason to do anything besides basic trading. That all you have to do in order to make a very effective profit is find a couple of planets that have one or two interrelated commodities, and then travel back and forth between them, obeying the rules of supply-side economics. Buy low and sell high. That's all you need to do in order to basically win at this game. And of course you might be thinking, well, what about missions? Surely if I take on missions, I can earn extra money. And the problem there is that for Cosmonautica, most of the missions are either repetitive or just not worth it. First of all, all the missions are randomized. So it's not always easy to get something that's appropriate for your ship or your current objectives. Secondly, all of the missions are timed. So if you for some reason choose one of the slower ship types, you're always going to be at an inherent disadvantage. And thirdly, and this is probably most important, all of the missions have a penalty cost if you fail to finish them. So really, you shouldn't even be accepting missions unless it is guaranteed that you can complete them. Now, I'm going to go ahead and break down the missions even further, since they are an almost perfect distillation of what is wrong with this game. There are 
basically four types. Passenger transport, cargo, smuggling, and combat missions. Each one will have an associated difficulty level and for transport missions, typically a randomized destination. Now, passenger transport is probably the most benign. These are simple objectives of picking people up on your ship and transporting them to whatever location they need to go to. They're repetitive, but they're not challenging and they can provide you with a reliable secondary source of income. Cargo missions are a bit more aggravating. These are typically requests for a specific amount of goods to be delivered to a specific planet. However, because they request such a large amount of material and because they're all timed, unless you have the goods on hand already, they're usually not even worth picking up. From there, things only get worse for smuggling and combat missions, because in addition to very poor pacing, the game also has a very uneven progression. When you take on smuggling missions, your objective will be to attempt to get contraband material past customs officers. But whether or not you'll be able to succeed in getting past customs is based on random chance. Now, granted, you can improve your odds, either through bribery, which costs money, or through hacking, which requires specialized research and dedicated crew members. And if somehow you still mess up, you have to pay the penalty cost as well. In either case, smuggling really isn't even viable unless you have a lot of extra cash or have researched pretty much the entire tech tree. And if it wasn't bad enough, then there's combat, which is, without a doubt in my mind, the most unbalanced feature in the entire game. For you see, what the game fails to tell you is that in order to even attempt ship-to-ship -ship combat, you need a huge investment of money and technology. I mean, let's, let's take a little look here. This is me on the left attempting to engage in a bit of piracy by attacking a low-level trade ship using the starting weapon that I was able to afford at the beginning of the game. You may notice that over the course of this battle, I am almost completely unable to even injure the other ship. In fact, if I was to actually let this battle run out in its entirety, you would see me run out of ammo before I even got him down to half health and then I would be forced to flee. Really, it's almost embarrassing. Combat is not even an option until you have researched all weapons and equipment and purchased one of the best ships in the game. And even then, it can still be a complete hit or miss depending upon how much ammo and crew experience you have. And what's crazy, what's, what's really crazy about all this, is you don't even need to take on missions. As I tried to indicate before, Cosmonautica is a game where you can make a healthy profit just by doing basic trading. You don't need to fight anyone, you don't need to take on missions, you don't even need to travel around unless you, for some reason, want to follow the storyline. Even then, the story quests you're given are pretty much just iterations of the four basic mission types that I laid out before. I mean, you can become a millionaire. You can have the best ship. You can have the best crew. You can have all technologies unlocked without ever having to leave the starting solar system. There's, there's just no sense of progression or pacing that in a game about being a starship captain, there's no incentive to actually travel around to other star systems. There are no unique weapons or gear to acquire. There are no unique locations. There are no unique missions. Any station you visit will have the same randomized selection of quests. Any recruitment center you visit will be able to get you any crew member you need. Any shipyard you visit will have the same selection of ships. There's no reason to go anywhere or do anything besides trading. It's really 
only in the trading system that planets have any sort of specialization or distinction. It's really the only system in the game that actually works. Now, before I render my final verdict, I feel that I should mention that at the time of recording, while I was playing this game, it was very buggy. And not just small bugs either, the game actually crashed multiple times. If it hadn't had an autosave feature, it would have been virtually unplayable. With that in mind, in the end I give Cosmonautica 1 out of 4 stars, and do not recommend it. If all you want is an interstellar trading simulator, then yeah, you might actually get a few solid hours of enjoyment out of this game. But if you try to engage with any of the other systems, you're in for nothing but disappointment. Alright, well thanks for listening. I hope that your luck amongst the stars is better than mine. Until next time.